Pastor Mike here. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time today. Uh, If you haven't already, I'd love for you to sign up for our daily email. It's a great way to start the day. It's the way that I start my day. (laughs) And it's a way to bring God's word straight into your inbox first thing in the morning. Uh, My teammates at Time of Grace do a fantastic job of giving you video and written devotions, blog posts, podcast episodes, and the occasionally fun and quirky social media posts. And all of it's to encourage you with God's amazing word. Just go to timeofgrace.org to sign up today. Hey friends, this week we get to talk about Joshua in the Bible. And you know which book of the Bible you will find Joshua in? Joshua. It's the the book of the Bible that is named after Joshua. So Joshua, if you don't know Joshua, Joshua is the successor of Moses. And Moses is very, very well known. Moses is the Ten Commandments guy. The guy who went up on Mount Sinai and had conversations with God. And he brought down the Ten Commandments. And he led Israel through 40 years in the wilderness. He's the guy who went into Egypt and stood toe-to-toe with Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. Those, uh, so the Moses had, uh, there were some pretty big sandals to fill here, and Joshua was the guy who was pegged to fill those sandals just as the 40 years in the wilderness was coming to an end. God did not allow Moses to go into the promised land of the land of milk and honey that he had promised them. He allowed Moses to get a glimpse of what was in the promised land before God took him away from the earth. But Moses was gone, and God looked at Joshua and said, It's your turn. There are a couple of things. We're just going to spend a little bit of time in the first nine verses of chapter one in the book of Joshua today. We'll get into the rest of Joshua as we go through the week. But the first nine verses are packed full of some incredible applications for our own lives and the different situations that we find ourselves in. One of the more famous passages in in those first nine verses is the one where God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous as you're, going to, as you're stepping into this new situation, as you're stepping into this new job, be strong and courageous. In fact, God says that to Joshua three times just in those first nine verses. You know what else he tells Joshua to do in those first nine verses? He says, don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be careful to obey all my laws. Keep this book of the law on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Be careful to do everything that is written in it. All those things just in the first nine verses of the first chapter of Joshua that God is telling Joshua, be sure you pay attention to all these things. Be sure you read the law. Be sure you think about it day and night all the time without not thinking about it. Oh, I wasn't there, but if I were, I might ask Joshua, how do you feel? <laughs> Expecting that he's going to say, boy, I feel a little bit overwhelmed. And maybe you know that feeling too, the feeling of being overwhelmed with way too much to do, the feeling of starting a new position, a new job, living in a new city, moving to a new place, leading your family into a new land, Uh, the feeling of being overwhelmed with little children at home and feeling like their life and their needs is just dictating every moment of your existence. There are a lot of times in life that we feel overwhelmed where we find it really hard to think that we will be able to be strong and courageous like he told Joshua. And I'm sure it would be tough for the same reason it is for us. But... There are a couple other things that God said to Joshua just in those first nine verses. As they were getting ready to go into the promised land, as they were getting ready to face all the nations that were going to try to stop them from going into the promised land, in those first nine verses, God also said these things to Joshua. He said, Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. He said, Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He said, Joshua, I will be with you. Joshua, I will never leave you or forsake you. Joshua, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He said all those things to him. As a reminder to Joshua, as he was getting into this new task, it may have been a bit overwhelming that he was never going to be alone. And do you know that in so many places in the Bible, God says these very same things to you, sometimes with the exact same words when he says that, Surely he's with you always to the very end of the age. He's going to, you are never alone. Um, sometimes in a slightly different way, in Romans chapter 8, um, you know, when he says that nothing in all creation is going to be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, we're more than conquerors over everything, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation. Just There's nothing we need to be afraid of. Every enemy, sin, death, Satan, and trouble, One day we're going to see that we'll be on the winning side of all of those different things. That's the truth that we get to see every time we go to the cross of Jesus. And it's a wonderful thing. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by life right now, take some encouragement from Joshua. 
that you are really never alone as you go through life. And we'll find some more specific encouragement as we go through the week, but, um, but just know for now that God will always be faithful to you. He will always be faithful to his promise and his faithfulness to us will always be greater than our faithfulness to him. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He's a God of power. He's the God who allows us to step into our next moments, whatever they are, feeling strong and courageous because he's with us, just like he was with Joshua.